Bungalas has a long history of delivering employment and training programs to regional and remote communities in South Australia, and the Northwest Indigenous Pastoral Project is a good fit with our activities. Um, so what is the Northwest Indigenous Pastoral Project and what is its purpose? Um, the purpose is to bring, there's two, two major reasons, is to bring non-productive land back into production and to provide employment for Aboriginal, pe uh, Aboriginal people. Um, there are actually four organisations uh, that benefit from this program, being the uh, Kokatha Pastoral Proprietary Limited. They have stations at uh, Andamuka, Purple Downs, and Roxby Downs stations. Uh, the APY lands, the Antakarinya Matu Yankanajara, uh, they've got Mabel Creek out near Cooper Pedy, and finally us with Emeru Station and the Ostrich Farm. We don't have any ostriches on the Ostrich Farm, but there used to be back in the 1930s. The other three, the other three of my colleagues run uh, cattle, we run sheep. Um, the program is part of the state government's 10 million jobs accelerator fund and it's delivered through the Department of Primary Industries and Regions in partnership with the Indigenous Land Council. Um, so why is the program important? Well, I can't speak for my colleagues but I can show why the program is important by using Bungala as a case study. Emeru Station is the the top part of the property, and the ostrich uh, farm is the, is the bottom section there. Emeru is around about 6,386 hectares. Uh, it's got a capacity for 1,200 sheep. It's located 15 kilometres north of Port Augusta. Now, Emeru Station, um, around about four or five years ago, had been vacant, had been abandoned. Um, the country was looking good because it had no grazing on it for all those years, um, but it was a non-performing asset, and there's no way that we could have that just sitting there. Also, the Emeru station had been uh, broken into, all the copper pipe had been taken from that, so it was going into disrepair as well. Um, so we've tried to work out how we could get it back into production. So. Um, Bangala started to take on work for the Dole participants when that first commenced and we would take 15 participants for six months working either 32 hours or 25 hours a week. Um, so it was going to be a fairly slow process and basically it was so run down that the fencing to the north had completely fallen apart. Um, it wasn't able to contain sheep. The water infrastructure was the toss troughs and the... Uh, uh, tanks, etc., uh, were in disrepair. In fact, you had to use a motorbike to get out to even uh, just look at the stuff. So we started grading tracks to the water points. We started getting the guys involved in fencing. So they did four and a half kilometres of brand new fencing at the top end. Uh, Bungala provided the uh, funds for the materials and the labour was from the work for the dole. This was going to take us quite a considerable time to get this back into uh, production. So along came the uh, Northwest Indigenous Pastoral Project, and that has been an absolute boom. What it did was accelerate the bringing this production land, well, non-productive land, back into production. Um, it also enabled us to employ some permanent Indigenous people, and so from that. Uh, first group of work for the Dole participants, uh, four really showed promise and so we, uh, we took those on and they're still working with us now on that project. In fact, Minister Brock visited us a short while ago um, and he actually, um, because of his nature, uh, the guys found him very comfortable to talk to and they were quite prepared to tell him the advantage that they and their family had gained from being um, employed by Bungala. The other land on the ostrich farm, I'll get to that later, um, that's probably in a worse condition than Emeru. Um, Emeru now is, is back into production. We weren't quite sure whether Bungala had the uh, expertise and the facilities to run a sheep station, so we made a decision to lease it for three years, and so we have, but we kept the, um, 
the uh, station out and also the shearing says so we can use that as a basis for our uh, work for the dole participants. Um, I mentioned that it was in partnership with the Indigenous Land Corporation. Um, they also were able to assist us with the ostrich farm and provision of uh, more funding to allow us to buy um, additional fencing to start fencing that property for, again, for sheep. Um, we started that. Uh, we, I think we'll move on to that now. There's our, our pastoral crew. They're actually not out in their normal work area. They're actually at the Lois O'Donoghue uh, Hostel. The Lois O'Donoghue Hostel uh, was sold some years ago and Bangala bought it. And so our workers, because they not only become good at fencing, they become good at cementing um, and all sorts of ancillary services. They were out at Lois O'Donoghue doing, uh, doing some work out there. And now this leadership group of four Aboriginal um, people, plus the supervisor, those four are now, uh, because they're so good at what they do, they're able to mentor the new Work for the Dole uh, participants that come through. And they will be our supervisors uh, when we start doing the construction of the uh, photovoltaic. I'll talk about that later. Maydeck was our job service provider. Um, as I mentioned, they work 25 hours if they're less than 30 years, and 15 hours between 30 and 50. Um, we do six months placements. We have both uh, male and female. In fact, uh, Lynn is very strong on us taking more female participants. And we, um, in the facilities, we, because they're out uh, working on the, in the properties, uh, we've made some, they made, some portable toilets which we take out and uh, install so that we've got his and hers. Because we're 15 kilometres away, we needed to purchase a bus. Um, we bought a second-hand bus. Um, that enables us to, to get the employees out there in the morning and bring them back at night. Um, 13 kilometres is, is really a handy distance because um, with the work for the doll, you're either going to go out there and work for the day or you're going to walk home. Um, we also bought a, a, a truck and we are doing part of our staff development is to get the guys their MR licence. The 30 of kilometres of fencing is new and 80 kilometres has been patched. Um, the, there's two sections to go still that need repairs and that is on the, the hillside but uh, because it's fronting a national park and because it's hills, um, if the sheep go up there they're going to come back down to get water. The only thing that can stay up there are the goats. Um, the building that you see there uh, was an old, just an abandoned old shed. Uh, they completely rebuilt that. We also started a, um, a community garden, um, but we stopped that because the water out there is Maine's water and it's too expensive. That's the old homestead. Um, they also, this is the work for the old participants plus our guys, they also participated in redoing the floorboards, um, as you can see up there, sanding them all, um, surfacing them, and that homestead now is uh, being occupied by our supervisor. Before that, it was just uh, it was abandoned. As I said, the copper piping had all been stolen. Some of the building structures, that little shed on the left, uh, they completely stripped that and rebuilt it. It's now the crib room. That's it now. Um, you see the guys out there doing the cementing. Um, all the concreting for all the troughs was all done by mixing it by hand. The only thing we bring in is the, is the rubble. Um, the guys go out on site and it's all mixed by hand. Um, some of the fence line renewals, uh, looking down the graded path, putting up some of the fencing. We did both external fencing and internal fencing. That's just creating a line. You can see the old fencing. In fact, as they pull down the old fencing, they roll it up. They're, the old timbers, because they're so old, they're brilliant for firewood. And so the guys sell them for $3.50 each. And they put that aside for their, their Christmas functions or any other functions they like to have. OK, that's the, the grader. We, we usually hire a grader a week at a time uh, at our cost. Uh, but it's absolutely necessary to get access to the fence lines. 
We'd like to buy one, but they're too expensive. That's another shot of the, the fencing. That's when they go out and just sight the line. Um, the supervisor used to play tricks on me. You go down the other side and put a one one uh, post out of position, and then challenge them to see whether this line was fine. Um, and they'd pick him up. They said, "No, there's one out." So they've learnt that. In fact, they have become so good at fencing uh, that we thought, When's, "What's a way we can keep them in permanent employment if this program ceases?" And we thought, um, "A fencing gang." So recently we uh, applied for a commercial contract to do 22 kilometres of fencing at Ingemar Station up near Cooper Pedy. So we won that contract, it's slightly less than what I would like, but anyway, we needed to show our credentials. Uh, the guys went up there for four weeks and they finished all the fencing, it's brilliant fencing. Um, they stayed out there at Ingemar, away from the families for the four weeks. Uh, we, we brought back two after two weeks and sent the other two up, so they all had an opportunity to do it. Um, it was that successful, we were invited back to do some more fencing and the guys leave next week um, to do another uh, further kilometres up there. And we also picked up a uh, small contract in the Port Augusta city for two kilometres of fencing as well. So we are trying to get them to be commercial. Um, and to do that, we've had to um, invest money. So bad debt, we look at good debt for infrastructure, creating jobs. And so we bought um, backhoe and uh, we get a trailer so we could get the, to get the backhoe up to Ingemar and so we can get it out to other areas. You couldn't buy one off the shelf because they're only made to go on, on roads. So we go and get one manufactured up in corn, made of steel, um, so we can get our our uh, gear up there. I mentioned a while ago the cost of water. We've got seven water meters out there um, and to run sheep using um, mains water is just, it's just too expensive. It's possible but it's expensive. Um, so we looked at ways we'd get around that and we decided that we would um, sink some bores there. Now, strangely enough, Emma Roo and, and the ostrich farm, there's been no bore ever sunk there. Um, we've, we located, well, we found three, three areas. Um, the guy was a professional contractor and he comes out with a piece of wire looking for the water. So I said to him, you can get rid of that, get a laptop, get, get on the GPS and find our water. But anyway, his, his, his bit of wire did the trick. The first one we sank to 100 metres. Uh, near the uh, near the shed, and it was half as saline as the uh, the ocean, so that was capped. We went up the top end of the property um, and sunk it to 100 metres. He was so convinced he had water there that, um, and instantly we went halves with the with the neighbour because they're right next door. So we cut our cost in half. Um, got down to 100 metres. He was so convinced there was water there that we went up and had a meeting on site. And he said, "Well, we'll go down further." So we did, or we pick up the whole thing and go somewhere else. Went down 150 metres. Um, still no water, but unfortunately the borehole started to, to fall in, so we need a vibrating head. So he's getting that from Canada. He's so convinced there's water there, and we've paid him for what he's done. He's coming back for the price of fuel, just the cost of diesel to do. Continue that bore. And so we're getting a bit desperate now because we've spent $70,000 and we haven't found any water. <laughs> so he went to the third spot with this piece of twisted metal. And um, at 100 metres we struck good water. At 110, we struck even better water with a better flow. Um, and so that, that, that's the dr drilling rig. And to get the drilling rig to the three points, we had to grade roads for them. But the water is so much pressure there that we've blown hoses coming down from the top of the hill down to our farm. So we've had to put in an intermediate station to take away some of that pressure. So we can run that water from the top of the hill down to our ostrich farm, which is around about four and a half kilometres away without pumping. And the ostrich farm is on the other side. Now, I mentioned that we've now leased out the uh, Emeru station. They're running uh, around about 800 sheep on there at the moment. Um, and we decided, OK, let's get over the ostrich farm. We did 13 kilometres of fencing, one kilometre of dividing fencing, gates, tanks, troughs. Now, um, that's ready for uh, stock now. 
And the idea is that we'll see how they go looking after sheep um, and, um, and we'll use that as the, as, the, as the project to see when the other, other one lease expires in 18 months, whether we take that back over and run it ourselves or we continue to lease it. We're hopeful we'll take it back over. Um, the sheep aren't in there yet because those of you are in the regions, you know the price of sheep at the present time. Um, we attended, we had our agents attend the auction last week and we got, uh, I think we got 50. We want to put 150 out there, so we've got another 100 we've got to buy yet. That, that again is um, part of our good debt from Bungala. And then finally, um, with the ostrich farm, we'd, we'd intended to run sheep on the whole property. We'd, it's a bit of sand hill country. Um, which we couldn't run sheep on because it's just to nude the sand hills and, and make it unsuitable. Um, so we were looking to probably run about 500 and 550 as it is through the triangle paddock and the paddock down the bottom which we're now working on today. Uh, we expect to have around about 220 sheep out there. But a while ago, maybe 18 months ago, Adani, the Indian company that's trying to do the Carmichael Basin, visited us and said, you've got some good land out there. It's flat, it's not subject to inundation. Uh, it's got a 132 kVA transmission pole going across it. Um, we'd like to build a solar farm. So we were skeptical. Um, but we signed a memorandum of understanding for 12 months, had a couple of meetings with them, but nothing really eventuated. And since then, that memorandum was finished. And then um, we were introduced by Len Lou Owens, a uh, very good friend of Bunkala now, and a good friend of the state, I should say. Uh, Lou Owens introduced us to Reach Solar Energy. Now, these guys were really keen to get something going. They wanted to build a 300 megawatt photovoltaic uh, facility out there, which would be the biggest in the southern hemisphere. And they said to me, well, we'll see, see how we go. So we negotiated a contract with them, um, a 30-year contract, to build this facility, and the contract, rather than try to get the maximum amount of money out of it, we actually agreed that we wanted clauses in there to allow Bangala, Aboriginal Corporation, to have its employees and people who, that are associated with us employed out there both during the construction phase and also during the, um, the operational phase. So we took a cut in what we're going to get over the 30 years. Uh, that's been written into the contracts and it's also uh, written into the subcontracts for all the um, contractors, etc., that's coming out there. Now, it's been announced. They're working out there now um, to position Bangala uh, to get those jobs. We have um, entered into a joint venture with the Career Employment Group, which is a um, labour hire company based in Wyala. They've got some of the expertise. We have a little bit of the expertise, not as much as them, so we're going to a joint venture to develop a labour hire company, um, and we will train the workers for the jobs that are going to be available out there, and we're hopeful to get 20% uh, Indigenous employment. It's an aspiration. We tried to write it into the contracts, but we didn't get that, but they know what we would like. Um, and so that's the next stage for Bangala. But it doesn't overshadow the fact the Northwest Indigenous Pastoral Project has been very important to us, and it still is important to us. We haven't finished. Um, we've still got more work to be done there and um, I'm happy that just recently it was announced, I guess through Minister Brock's assistance, that that uh, program is going to run for a further 12 months and we're excited about that. <coughs>